good morning. My name is John Quinn. I'm a professor of history here at Salve Regina. I've taught here since 1992, and I vividly recall when I was hired, I told one of my advisors that I'd been hired by Salve Regina and I would be going to Newport, Rhode Island. My advisor said, congratulations, you're going to the most beautiful college in America. And I thought that sounded interesting, but um, when I came to see Salve, I came to agree with them. I think Salve has a wonderful, very unusual campus that it's worth talking about. In a normal year, we would do a tour with everyone in person, but given COVID and the quarantine, we thought we would do a virtual tour to introduce you instead. And when you're able to get out of quarantine, you can check out these places for yourself. But our first place we're gonna be talking about is Ochre Court, called a cottage, uh, belonged to the Golette family, and this was the first building that Salve Regina College acquired when it got started in 1947. And I wanna just give you a little bit of background about how Salve got this beautiful building. The building was constructed by Ogden Golette. He was a New York City businessman who had made a lot of money in real estate. He got property on Fifth Avenue, made millions of dollars back in the 1880s. So think about how wealthy he would be by today's standards. So he decided to build himself what was called a cottage. This would strictly be for the summertime. He would come up here July, August, maybe six weeks, right? So this would just be a little summer place, a summer getaway for him. He built it in 1894 and he liked to put his initials everywhere. So if you walk by the manhole cover, you're going to see OG on the manhole cover. If you look at the downspout, you're going to see the OG letters linked, and you'll see that on the other side too. Um, the building is described as French Gothic. The Golettes were of French descent, and we're going to see different French symbols uh, in the building when we go inside. I want to point out, though, some of the neat little aspects of this Gothic cottage. Uh, see these gargoyles? Here's one of them uh, looking very fierce on one corner of the uh, mansion. Um, we're going to we'll go around the other side now and take a look at this, the, the mansion from the outside and then we'll come in. Now I want to show you a few little features on the, the side of the building. Behind me, you can see the balcony behind me. And then maybe you can see the fleur-de-lis symbols carved into the stone. The Golettes were French. The fleur-de-lis symbol was of the French monarchy, right? So that was very fitting. And then maybe up above, you might be able to see more animals. We saw a gargoyle in the front. Uh, there are these griffins, sort of like dragon-like animals, uh, up above on both sides of the fleur-de-lis. And then if we go down further, you see a, a chimney. Uh, they decided to put a sundial uh, on the side of the chimney. So I don't know if you'll be able to make that out or not, but if you can't see it on the video, you have to check it out for yourself, see if it's working. Well, so Ogden Golet built this cottage, right, 50 rooms. It was, a, it was very much a high-tech cottage for its day. It had a working elevator in it, uh, all sorts of electric features. Um, he only lived three years. So he dies in 1897. He was still in his 40s. Given what we said about him only using it for six weeks, we can imagine he was probably only in this building just a few times. So the building passed to his wife and to his daughter, Robert. And as time goes by, this beautiful building is going to become more and more of a burden for the Golat family. Particularly once we hit the, the Great Depression in 1929, the age of the great parties in Newport has long passed, and families are thinking, what can we do with these properties? Properties that they really adored, but they found they couldn't sustain financially anymore. They were expensive to heat, there were taxes to pay. Imagine the maintenance bill, right? If there was a problem with this building, if there's a problem with the roof, how would you get people to fix it? By World War II, Robert Golette was no longer living in this building. He had a much smaller house, still in Newport, 
and he's trying to figure out what to do with this property, what to do with it. He didn't want the property to be torn down, but he knows he can't afford it anymore, and it's simply too big uh, for him and his family. In 1945, at the end of World War II, proposals were uh, taken to house a, a new United Nations organization, find a place to house the UN so that there would not be any more wars after World War II was over. A number of cities in the Northeast, in New England, put in bids to be the headquarters for the United Nations. And so Robert Golett had that same idea for Newport. Couldn't Newport be the center of the United Nations? And couldn't Ochre Court be the world headquarters building for the UN? The city of Newport thought it was a great idea, put a proposal in, of course, you know the story, New York City gets, gets the United Nations, but something like 16 different cities in the Northeast and New England put in bids, Boston, Philadelphia, Newport was probably the smallest city. Um, so that was a good try, but doesn't work out. So um, Golet talked to his daughter, who was a college student, to see maybe if she would want to live in it. And, that prospect didn't appeal to her either. It was too much, too big, too expensive. So Golet turned to his lawyer. His lawyer's name was Cornelius Moore. His lawyer was an Irish American, a, a Roman Catholic, and Moore told him that there was a group of sisters who were trying to set up a college in Rhode Island. They wanted to set up a college to be the sister school to Providence College, which had been set up in 1917. Um, and the sisters already had a charter, but they didn't have any land and they didn't have a building. And so Golette said, fine. And so in March of 1947, Golette turns over the building to the Diocese of Providence, the Bishop of Providence, who immediately turns it over to the Sisters of Mercy, who decide to come down and they're going to set up a new school in September of 1947. So they have a very short amount of time from March of 1947 to take this building and turn it into Salvi Regina College. And this will be the whole college, this one building. So if you were a freshman in 1947, everything you did would be inside this one building. 